Hello everyone. In today's real analysis class, we will try to discuss certain ideas that might have probably led to the construction of the real number system from the rational number system. Before going into that, let us briefly recall the history of number systems in general. So, if we start with the history, we may have to initially recall uh, the German mathematician Kronecker, who initially said long back, that natural numbers is given by God and everything else after that it's a work of mankind. So according to Kronecker, only natural numbers is given by God and everything else is unnatural or artificial. We can probably think about the construction of integers, rational numbers, etc. in the following way. We had M in the beginning, if you accept Kronecker's words. We wanted a number of the form 0 to show that we do not have anything in our hand. So probably 0 came into existence, giving rise to a new number system called the set of all whole numbers. After that, what happened is that, suppose I wanted to say that I have a deficiency of 10 rupees in my hand, I have to probably use a number of the form minus 10. Basically because deficiency usually means that, suppose that somebody else is giving 10 rupees to me, that 10 rupees will automatically vanish into that deficiency, which in turn gives rise to the algebraic expression of the form minus 10 and 10 added, that gives me 0. In today's algebraic language, we call minus 10 to be the additive inverse of 10. And in this way, we started creating negative numbers of the form minus 1, minus 2, etc. And all these things together with the set of all whole numbers gave rise to a new system called set of all integers. So what is happening next? We have the set of all integers with us. Now the problem is that there arises a situation of where we want to divide an integer, but the situation forces us to divide that into non-integer proportions. For example, suppose that we have three pieces of bread in our hand and we want to divide it among two people. So if we have to divide it equally, the only one way probably is to think about a number of the form 3 by 2, uh, which is in fact 3 into uh, 1 by 2, and this uh, numbers of the form 1 by 2, 1 by 3, etc., we started calling as multiplicative inverses, probably because, not probably because, it is because 2 into 1 by 2 becomes equal to 1, this 1 by 2 we call as the multiplicative inverse of and one we call as the multiplicative identity. So, in this way, we started thinking about multiplicative inverses of all the integers. We started multiplying multiplicative inverses of integers with other numbers, giving rise to numbers of from 3 by 2, minus 5 by 3, uh, 4 by 6, etc. And finally, we arrived at a system of numbers of the form which we denoted by q. For quotient, we got, we got a system of numbers of the form m by n with uh, m and n integers and n not equal to 0. So, we finally arrived at a system called the set of rational numbers. Now, what can be the idea that forced us to think about irrationals? One most probable reason from the history that we can find is the history of Greek mathematics. We are all familiar with the name of Pythagoras. Pythagoras constructed a triangle in this form. One side here, the other side here, and the join we will go back, move in the side. And the lengths of the side of triangle he proposed 
it was 1 and 1 inch. Suppose that we call this side to be C. According to his own observation, we know that uh, the square of length of the largest side is going to be sum of squares of other two sides, which is equal to 1 square plus 1 square, which is equal to 2. That means that C is going to be a number which is on squaring that gives rise to 2. In this today's language, we denote this number by root 2. So it was actually something puzzling for the Greek that uh, they were not at all aware of anything called irrational numbers. They knew only about up to rational numbers. Now they are forced to actually think about something called uh, irrational numbers. But before even proceeding further, we would like to actually mathematically and rigorously prove that uh, this root 2, there is no number, there is no real number whose uh, which is rational and uh, its square is going to be equal to 2 or in other words we want to actually prove that we want to prove that the following statement we want to verify root 2 is not rational this is the statement that we want to verify so uh, we know that this is a statement. Therefore, that means that root 2 is not rational means that uh, either root 2 is not rational is going to be true or root 2 is not rational is going to be false. If root 2 is not rational is false, is false, its negation is going to be true. We are going to use a technique called the method of contradiction in which we assume that its negation is true and we will finally arrive at a false statement. So we assume the negation here in the beginning. What is the negation? root 2 is not rational, its negation is root 2 is rational, assume root 2 is rational. Once we use the definition of rational number, everything is going to be quite uh, simple. So what is the definition of rational number? If we have root 2 a rational number, then definitely there must exist two integers m and n where n not equal to 0 such that root 2 is equal to m by n. Therefore, there exists m n in z with n not equal to 0 such that root 2 is equal to m by n. Now, there may be some factors in common with this m and n. Therefore, we will cancel both these factors. We will cancel both these factors and we will arrive at finally an expression of the form p by q, where p by q is obtained by cancelling common factors if any existing in m n. Now, in that way, we can assume that there is no common factor among p and q other than 1, or this area of p and q is equal to 1. Now, if you do some algebraic manipulations, we get root 2 q is equal to p, and if you square and shuffle the way in which this expression is appearing, we get p square is equal to 2q square, which means that 2 divides 2q square and therefore 2 divides p square. But now 2 is a prime. We know that if a prime divides a product AB, if prime divides, suppose that R is a prime, this is something we need to separate R prime, R divides AB implies that r divides a or r divides p. Therefore, 2 is a prime, 2 divides p square, therefore 2 divides p into p. Therefore, according to this, we have to say that 2 is equal to 2 divides p or 2 divides p, which is equal to saying that 2 divides p. Therefore, we have p a multiple of 2 or p is equal to 2k or some k in the set of all integers. So, p is equal to 2k. Now, uh, we mark this as equation number 1. Therefore, equation number 1 now gives p is equal to 2k if we substitute, we get 4k square is equal to 2q square and on cancellation 2k square is equal to q square which means that 2 divides q square again using the same prime behavior of 2, we get 2 divides q implies that there exists R belongs to Z such that 
or otherwise you will use some other symbol because not to confuse s belongs to z such that u is equal to 2s but p is equal to 2k q is equal to 2s but these together implies that there is a common factor of at least 2 among this p and q therefore this area of pq is not going to be 1 this is going to be greater than 1 this actually gives rise to a contradiction contradiction to what contradiction to our previous assumption that p and q all common factors of for all common factors from m and are taken out and p and q are constructed like that this actually gives rise to a contradiction therefore all these things happen because we assumed something that is wrong but what is that wrong that we initially assumed we initially assumed in the beginning that uh, uh, root 2 is irrational that's what the mistake we have made so we must correct that mistake therefore our assumption is wrong therefore root 2 is not irrational sorry root 2 is not or it is irrational. Okay, therefore we have established the fact that um, um, there exist numbers which are not rational numbers. We established in the sense that we have already observed that uh, a number of the form root 2 actually exists as the side of root 2 actually exists as the length of the side of a triangle which has 1 and 1 is a right triangle actually 1 and 1 are the sides of its base and all if you want to call it like that then the hypotenuse of this triangle will have length equal to square root of 2 but that is not a rational number now we must think of something else also about q certain properties of q that if we recall are that uh, uh, q is a field in the algebraic sense. So what is meant by saying that Q is a field? Q is a field simply means that uh, there are two operations in Q. One is addition, one is multiplication. Uh, with respect to these two operations, all the elements in Q satisfy certain conditions, certain uh, properties like uh, uh, even if you add two rational numbers, you will be again getting a rational number. There is a rational number. 0 which on adding to any rational number you will be getting the same rational number back uh, some other extra properties multiplication also satisfies uh, several properties in that way if you say that q is a field algebraically now one more thing one more observation about q is that the numbers from q is densely packed on the number line what do you mean by saying densely packed suppose that you have a and b in q a b in q now you can find one more number between a and b which is still rational what is that number easy to find a plus b by 2 is also in q because we have already observed that if a and b are rational a plus b is rational and 1 by 2 is a rational number so a plus b into 1 by 2 is a rational number therefore a plus b is again going to be there in q therefore what we can say is the rational number system is very dense on the real number line but still the problem is that because of the existence of root 2 there may be many more numbers which are not rational so even if q is very dense on set of all real numbers it is not complete in the sense that there are a number of a huge number of holes on the number line now an exercise for you to probably think root 3 is rational uh, proving the statement is going to be exactly the same as in the case of root 2 is rational similarly we can show root 5 is root 7 is but the proof that root 6 is irrational demands an alternate way to establish the statement so root 6 we cannot uh, directly prove using the same method that we employed in the case of 
root 3 and root 5, slight modifications may be necessary. So, what we are seeing now is that um, Q has all the properties just of uh, real numbers in the sense that it's a field, uh, any number added uh, uh, from Q will be again in Q, any number multiplied Q will be again in Q. But the difference is that if you apply the operation of taking square roots, uh, the numbers in Q is not going to stay inside Q again, it will go out to a set call, etc. for irrationals. But we are not at all very confident about what types of numbers are going to be there in Z of irrationals. We have already seen that uh, uh, root of certain numbers is going to be irrational. But can we say that all the irrational numbers are going to be in the form square root of 2 or square root of 3 or square root of 6, etc. or even uh, cube root of 2? What about cube root of 2? Cube root of 2. Can we say that any rational number taken square root is going to be irrational? Of course, we cannot say that because we know that um, integer squares are also going to be rational numbers. For example, 4 is a rational number. Taking square root that actually gives a plus or minus 2. Therefore, we cannot strictly say that. Now, the other way asked is that can we say that every rational number is going to be of the form square root of some rational number? That is also not very clear for us. In fact, the answer is no. Because uh, uh, it's a fact that pi is rational at the same time pi is not the square root or cube root or anything like that of any rational number. Therefore, that means that the rational number system is something that we have to really worry about. We don't know exactly what types of numbers are going to be there and in what way we can actually derive them from the existing system. Recall that this problem was not actually there in the case of uh, integers and rational numbers. In the case of integers, we derived each and every integer from another integer. In, in the sense that uh, minus 1 we derived from 1. We wanted to cancel the deficiency of 1 and uh, we derive minus 1 and we add it to 1 will be 0. And minus 2 we derive from 2, minus 3 from 3, etc. And uh, 3 by 2 we derive from 3 and 1 by 2, where 1 by 2 is the multiplicative inverse of 2. Just like that for each and every a rational number we can probably find a justification about how it was actually constructed but this is not actually the case about irrational numbers so irrational numbers is most probably going to be much more complicated and in fact it is going to be much more complicated we will anyway stop today's session with this and in the next session probably we will continue with certain properties of uh, real number system and in general probably we will begin with certain properties of uh, uh, the basic concepts, certain basic concepts like sets, functions, domains, etc. We'll stop here. Thank you very much for your patience. Listen. Thank you.